Thanks to the supporters and channel member Nick Liman. Seven games to go. Six points clear. We need to start preparing for the Champions League, Mrs. Weirmouth. Yeah, I realise that probably means we're going to lose today. Hello and welcome to part 139 of Homegrown. I'm Kevin. Coming up on today's episode, we have two games in the league for you. We're at home against Southampton, away against Wolves. Since you were last with me, we've uh, we've we've been all right. We had a little bit of a, a little bit of a wobble there, losing against Liverpool, which I guess you can get away with losing against Liverpool. I think that was in the video, wasn't it? But then we also lost against Newcastle, which is less okay. But we bounced back in style with the return of Francisco coming on in that game and grabbing himself two goals to defeat Leeds. We actually, I think we came from behind twice in that game. So we were 2-0 down after 20 minutes, got it back to 2-2 by 30 minutes, 33 minutes. This would have been perfect for a video. 3-2 at half time. Um, then Oliveira missed a penalty. Um, Francisco grabbed the equaliser. And then on 72 minutes, a winner from Francisco. You can see he wasn't in there from the start. We actually went with Juan Jose up front on his own, playing in like a false nine role trying to get these i've been watching too much england at the euros i basically had jose playing up front but ending up with an average position about here trying to get these three to run past him and getting yordi to run past anything is close to impossible he does like to not run as much as possible so it didn't really work but francisco came on did all the running we switched the 424 turned the game around then grabbed a draw against west ham absolutely smashed leicester um ian grabbing a couple of goals in that game and then we beat huddersfield in the quarter final of the fa cup two goals from sydney which means in addition to being in a, in a champions league qualification spot we also have an fa cup semi-final coming up against slam dunks arsenal we're off to wembley boys and girls but that is for tomorrow's episode um, Sunday's episode. There's not an episode. So that's for Sunday. For today, it's all about the league. And this is what the league table looks like. So we've got seven games remaining. Um, it is, of course, Slam Dunks Arsenal, who are the team who are looking to catch us. Um, realistically, Leicester, Liverpool, Tottenham, they're probably not catching us at this point. Arsenal still can. Um, they're six points behind us, seven games to go. Leeds have played one game more than both of us. So, of course, the perfect situation would be for both me and Slam Dunk to hit the Champions League for the first time at the same time. That would be absolutely... I say the first time. Was he there? No. See, he hasn't He hasn't been in it. Slam Dunk's never managed in the Champions League either. Although, there was a media report. Slam Dunk's contract at Arsenal is up at the end of the season and he's talking about not signing. That being said... There you go. He signed it a week ago. So he's got a new four-year contract. He's on £150,000 a week at Arsenal. That man was on nothing on a part-time contract when we started this save. How much am I earning? Is Slam Dunk earning more than me? What the hell? He's earning double what I'm earning. I am in the wrong job here. Right, let's go try and beat... I forget who we're even playing. Southampton. Let's go and try and beat Southampton. We are back to the 4-2-4 today. And I am... Finally at the point where I'm catching up with the comment section and I'm losing patience with Yordi. Ian is starting to get a little bit of a run in the team on that left-hand side and Yordi probably needs to reinvent himself in the Juan Jose role. I think they both will be very good support strikers with Veloso or Francisco or Villa Lobos running beyond them. The, the quality we've got on the wings with Ian, Park, Sydney. Um, but yeah, I think Yordi's time on the wing might have expired so, the team for today, we've got Perez in goal, a back four of Kovalik, Elias, Erkan, and Thomas. Perez and Oliveira in midfield, Ian and Park out wide, and then Juan Jose and Veloso as our front two. Um, exciting news as far as international caps go. A lot of our players have just got their first international caps in the most recent um, international break that we've just had. Uh, Veloso making his debut for Portugal. Erkan made his debut for um, Turkey. Uh, McKinna made his Scotland debut. I'm sure there was one more and I can't remember who it was. But basically, everyone had a lovely old time making their international debuts. So the world is noticing that we're, that we're starting to step up and become a proper force and our players are international quality. Seeing Veloso make it into the Portugal, Portugal team was particularly exciting because obviously most of the internationals we've got so far are for that second rung of international team like Park plays regularly for South Korea. Perez, I think, is Bolivian and plays regularly for them. 
Um, I might he might not even be Bolivian. Um, but we've got a lot of players who've played a lot of games for that second tier of international teams. But seeing someone break into Portugal is it, it feels like we might not be a million miles away from getting an England international. Although obviously we need a regular starter who's English to be able to do that. Todd Thomas is probably the one. Maybe Todd Thomas could become England's right back at some point in the future. That's probably quite unlikely because I don't necessarily see him being my right back in the future. In fact, my long-term plan is um, Enoch Abagai. Again, I keep going back to him, get him back at the club, potentially to play right wing back. He's been playing right wing back for um, for Inter and he is now considered an elite wing back. So Abagai has become a right wing back. Probably always was, wasn't he? Elias with a thunderous header. But if we've got a gap in our team at right wing back, Abagai could be the man to make his glorious return. We keep looking into him. He doesn't want to come back until we improve our Premier League status. Well, if we qualify for the Champions League this year, he's running out of reasons not to come home, I would like to think. And as it stands right now, those two goals put us up to second in the Premier League. I know Manchester City have a game in hand over us, but we leapfrog above, above them temporarily. We're only 10 points behind Man United. Imagine if we closed the gap and won the league. We're not going to close the gap and win the league. But if we qualify for the Champions League, that would be a stupendous achievement, especially considering I called it at the start of the year and everyone thought I was mad. I could still be proven wrong, but it doesn't happen very often. Perez now with the corner from the right-hand side. We're getting more and more threatening from these set pieces again. It's not quite the level we were when we had Davies and Pritchard just absolutely dominating that near post on every header. We had the perfect storm of a combined height of about 13 feet between the two of them at a time when those near post corners were massively overpowered in the game, which is why they were both so dominant. But we're, we're getting back towards that kind of level. Elias, in particular, is a constant threat, even though he's not as tall as, um, as you would expect a constant goal threat kind of defender to be. Todd Thomas now... On the right-hand side, cuts it back to Park. Thomas floats the ball over. That's the thing with Todd Thomas. He's so good going forward. He's right. Oh, what an effort from Thomas. We've got to decide what we want from our wing-backs. We've got Kovalik as a more defensive option over here. Erkan can play right back. And he's on the right-hand side of our defence on cover. I think if we had McKinna in the midfield on a regular basis, we probably don't notice Todd Thomas's shortcomings as often as we do. Because going forward... I think we struggle to do much better than Thomas. He is a very, very good attacking wing back. He's just not very good at defending. So let's let's make the defensive side of his play less important. But that means dropping one of Perez and Oliveira from central midfield, which seems unthinkable to me. And part of me is considering the very strong prospect that Park leaves this summer, even if we get into the Champions League, because he's an elite midfield player who's wanted by Paris Saint-Germain. We've promised him Champions League and it looks like we might be able to deliver it. But if they come in and offer him £400,000 a week and offer us £200 million to take him, I don't think we're in a position to turn that down. And if Park were to leave, I think number one likely replacement for that right wing is Perez. We move Perez out to the right wing and that gets McKenna into the mid or McKenna into the midfield alongside Oliveira. It might actually, although we slightly weaken the attack by taking Park out of it, Perez is a great attacking threat, as we saw earlier in the season when he was playing a little bit further forward. And McKinna gives us a little bit more defensive security so Todd Thomas doesn't get as exposed. That's the theory anyway, but I don't want to just go with that in the meantime because Oliveira is our captain and he's very good. Perez is one of our best players. We can't drop Park. We're kind of stuck doing this at the moment. And let's face it, what we're doing at the moment is working. We're second in the Premier League, so let's not worry too much about it right now. Um, right, Ian is not really convincing me that he's going to be a viable replacement for Jordi the way he's played today. So Jordi's going to come on and get another opportunity to play out there on the left wing, even though I said he was done. Um, and we are also, we're also going to take off Juan Jose, who's not played very well at all today. Bring on Francisco for him, who has looked lively in recent games. Francisco, hopefully putting his injury problems behind him and can try and force his way back into this team again alongside Veloso this time rather than Villalobos. Villalobos definitely falling down the pecking order after all his rascal behaviour. Kovalik then on the left-hand side cuts it back to Oliveira. 
Oliveira to Todd Thomas. Look how far forward he is. It's a wonderful thing. And there's Francisco to Oliveira. Kovalik, we're keeping the ball nicely here, but someone could probably have a shot. Or else I fear we're going to give it away and let Southampton go and grab a goal of their own. Park just takes it upon himself to have the shot. There's his 16th goal of the season. The other option, of course, was the plan that we were talking about before. I mentioned this an episode or two ago. We could finally take the plunge and just start playing Park up front and then move Perez forward and get McKenna in that way and maybe bin off Juan Jose and go with Park alongside Veloso. It, it would take some retraining, but it's 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 there as an option. It's there as a possibility. Go full Cristiano Ronaldo with him. Right, we are going to take off uh, Perez. After all that, we don't actually have McKenna on the bench even today, so Diaz can come on for him. Poor old Diaz. He's a bit of a forgotten man, as is Emil Christensen. He was the fourth one who made his debut. He made his Norway debut. Him coming in at, in January at the same time as McKinnon, but arriving injured, meant that he didn't get the opportunity when McKinnon did, and he's fallen behind him in the pecking order. So we have got quite a crowded amount of options in central midfield now. But then I guess if we're going to be in the Champions League next year, which after another win like this is looking more and more likely, so if we've got the Champions League in our future... We need to be having a proper 25-man squad of players that we don't mind using. So if we sort this by star rating, look how ridiculous that is. Sort it by star rating and go down to 25, which is going to be about there, I think, 23. So 25 at the moment, include. I mean, it's almost everybody here, but that 25 is including Wally and Bayer and Bedwell, Garrido. These are players who aren't getting any game time at all. So... I think everyone in that squad now, if we assume the likes of Bayer, Wally, Edwell might well be moving on or going out on loan. I mean, Bedwell has only got three and a half star potential. Bayer and Wally are 23 and three star. They're done. Both of them are on their way. So if Bayer and Wally move on this summer, this becomes a 24-man squad with Antonio included in it. Everyone in there is going to get game time next year if we've got to fit the Champions League in. We know how stretched we got Last year with the Conference League, Champions League's even stretchier. Let's go and play Wolves. Well, on the topic of Diaz being the forgotten man, I figured let's put him in for the Wolves game, have a little look at him. Um, I feel like he's... Uh, I mean, I, I think he's actually played more games than I feel like he has. 16 starts. So he started about half of our Premier League games this season. But he does... In my head, he's fallen well down the pecking order. So... I guess we need to have a look at him. We're going to have a look at him today. He's the only change going into the Wolves game. And hopefully, we oh my word, with Oliveira not in the team, we need a new captain. Todd Thomas, the academy boy taking the captain's armband. Why not? He's the only English player in the team. He's the only... Is he the, No, Kovalik is still in the side, isn't he? So we've got two academy boys in there. But I, I can get on board with Todd Thomas being the captain in this situation. This, he's probably played more games for us than anyone else in that 11, actually, thinking about it. He's been a regular first-teamer for about three years now, whereas I guess Park might have played more games. Can't, can't imagine anyone else in this team has played more games for the club than Todd Thomas. Captain Thomas, sorry. It's Captain Thomas to you. Todd Thomas, home captain. Champions League winning captain, Todd Thomas. A nice ring to it, hasn't it? Um, right, Diaz. Got a bit of a point to prove today. Plays it forward to Ian. And Ian with the shot that is forced wide for a corner. I love the fact that we've got a Brazilian wonder kid called Ian and one on the other side called Sydney. I <laughs> I saw one the other day called Richard. I love it. I just want a team full of, full of Brazilian wonder kids with really bland English first names. Well, we will see. I mean, I saw a Kelvin. I've not seen a Kevin. I can find a Kevin to go with Ian, Richard, and Sydney. It'll be a, it will just be a beautiful thing. We've got we've got Douglas Allen as well, who's out on loan at the moment. He's got two of them. Veloso's in. Oh, what a goal from Veloso to make it twenty five for the season. We've got our striker. I mean, I know I've mentioned it a few times now, but there's no doubt anymore, is there, that he's the man who's going to be our striker going forward because he's still only twenty years old. He's now a full international. And look at the way he's hit that. He's lightning quick and can hit a football like that. Beautiful stuff. 1-0 to home. And we take another giant leap towards Champions League qualification. I haven't actually looked to see where Wolves are in the league. I don't remember seeing them 
in and around where we are. It's a lovely interception from Perez there. Remember, Perez can't play as a defensive midfielder, apparently, apart from the fact he's really good at it when we see him do it. He, I think he's only got like an eight or a nine for his tackling. But I, I don't know what other attributes he's got that balance out the fact he can't really tackle very well. He must just have excellent anticipation or positioning or something because... He actually does make quite a lot of interceptions in that midfield and keep things nice and tidy in there for us. When we're against really good opposition, you can see he's not quite up to the defensive stresses of the job. But against this lot, he's uh, he's just keeping things ticking over in there very nicely. Park and Thomas combined to win the ball back off Wolves. It gets lumped forward, but Ian is nowhere to be seen on that left-hand side. And Wolves have it back again, and they've got him behind us here. And there's an equaliser. The linesman's flag is up, though. So it's not an equaliser. Huzzah. Um, I mean, he, he looked well offside. He was he was miles behind our, uh, our defensive line there. So you don't get behind our defensive line unless you're offside. Let's have a little look. And he is a long way off as well. Not even close. And they were, I was worried for a second there that Captain Thomas might have been playing him on, but he wasn't. Um, big deep cross from Thomas looking for Ian. Ian can't win the ball and Kovalik is going to try and play it forward to him, to his feet, which is where it's much more effective to give the ball to Ian to his feet. And then Diaz to Kovalik. Diaz, go on, just stick it in the top corner. Or oh, do that. That is a stunning goal. He rolls the through ball through to Ian and Ian just squares it for Veloso, who grabs his second of the game. Less than 20 minutes gone. Veloso's got a double already and this is some lovely football from us. Great ball from Diaz, um, which we see there. Perfect through ball for Ian, who just squares it across. And any one of these three could tap that in. But Veloso, of course, as he is in most situations, is the quickest of the three and gets there ahead of what I assume is Park and Juan Jose as the other two who would have been lurking, looking for that tap in. But neither of them quite as quick on the reaction when a ball is played across a six-yard box as Sandro Veloso. And now Wolves on the attack again. It's not like we've completely dominated Wolves in this game. They do look like they're going to grab a goal in this tie. But they also keep going. I thought, I thought they were offside again. The linesman's waving his flag around, but I think he was giving the corner. Right, corner for Wolves. It's an in-swinger, and we're not really dealing with it properly. Someone needs to get this ball clear. And um, there is Veloso on the edge of the area. He's got, I think, Jose ahead of him. Veloso is just going to try and run it on his own. No, he wants his hat trick. And it was probably a little bit too ambitious. He had Juan Jose there, ready for the ball. He, I mean, he could have even tried a little one-two with Jose. And as it stands at the moment, are Manchester United losing or have already lost? Because what was 10 points is down to eight points. Surely not. With seven games to go. I mean, it's surely not. Can you imagine? Can you imagine? We're not thinking about it. We're here purely to qualify for the Champions League. We're not looking at what's going on above us because that's that, that's just crazy. Looking up in this situation, if you're us, we only, we're only concerned with what's going on behind us. We have to keep remembering that. It's all about qualifying for Europe, qualifying for the Champions League, not worrying about what Manchester United are up to. We don't care. They can just go and do Manchester United things and it's none of our concern and never will be. Right, Wolves have another corner. They seem to have had a lot of corners today. This time over here on this left-hand side and they've played it back to a guy they've left in a huge pocket of space but rather than having him shoot, he's given it back to the corner taker twice. Um, I feel like that's something they'd practised on the training ground and then forgotten how to do. Um, Jose tries to play it to Diaz to get it clear and between the two of them, they've managed to put us back under pressure and it's yet another corner for Wolves. They're going to score one of these sooner or later because they're getting so many opportunities. Another corner floated over. Perez is there to head clear, but it's back with the corner taker again. And we just, we are under so much pressure. We're a team that are two nil up. We are taking, we're doing a lot of defending in these highlights. Veloso now all on his own. Although Jose has, has ran quicker than I've ever seen him move to, to be up there to offer some kind of support. But Veloso, is in full-on greedy, wants a hat-trick mode today, I think. And I don't expect to see Sandro Veloso passing a football, at least until he scored his third goal for today, because he just doesn't really look up for passing today, does he? Right, Erkan's taken an injury. Do we not have a centre-back on the bench? Because that seems like a little bit of an oversight. I guess Kovalik could move over and play centre-back, and Perisato could come on. Yeah, Antonio's there in the other defender slot on the bench. Ian from range. Um, Erkan seems to have recovered anyway. We got the message saying he'd taken a knock and was 
down to a red for his conditioning and either this hasn't updated or he's recovered because he doesn't look any more tired than anyone else around him at the moment. Uh, although I was hovering over Elias, there's Erkan, who is, I guess he's struggling a little bit, but it's not red. We'll keep an eye on him. We're monitoring the Erkan situation. Um, if we can grab a third goal, then I've got no fear at all about moving Kovalik over. He's played centre-back for us a few times. I thought he'd given away a penalty there. Oh, is that a save from Perez? Oh, no, I think it's it's a, it's a header that goes just over. Um, right, he suffered a pulled thigh, but should be able to play through it. Okay, we can, we'll monitor him. He probably is going to come off at some point in this second half, but without having a centre-back on the bench, we uh, we don't really have much choice but to leave him on. Pazzy Cass has picked up another injury and we've loaned Douglas Allen out, so we don't really have another natural centre-back. So Kovalik will have to play there if Erkan picks up an injury as well. And I might end up regretting loaning out Douglas Allen. Right, Park on the right-hand side, crosses to Veloso. And there is his hat-trick. There is number 27 for the year. It's Wolves nil, home three. It's the Sandro Veloso show. And he is full of goals at the moment. And it is beautiful to witness. Um, what a lovely finish. He's scored three very different kinds of goal. He's a, he's a complete footballer. Manchester United must be playing. And I just can't see them because it's gone back to a 10-point gap at the top of the league. So I guess I just haven't noticed them. There's several other times I've looked through the current fixtures that are being played. So we're not worried about what Manchester United are doing. We shouldn't even be looking for them. We're only concerned with what's going on below us. And we haven't even looked at that yet today. Oh, that's another very good save from Perez. I tell you what, over the last couple of episodes... For goodness sake. I was about to say a nice thing about Perez. I was so close to saying a nice thing. He's made it, he makes a good save, and then, well, just, well, I'd like to say that was unexpected. Importantly, we are 12 points clear of Arsenal as it stands, but they have two games in hand over us. So the two games we've played in this episode, Arsenal haven't bothered playing either. I don't know what they've been up to, um, but we were six points ahead I think we were six points ahead, level on point, level on games with them at the start of the episode. And now it's all changed. Right, we are going to take uh, Can off. We're going to bring Perisato on, stick Kovalik in there, and just... We, we don't want an injured man in our defence when we're trying to hold on to a lead. Francisco can come on for Jose as well. Just, uh, I mean, Jose, we've already, we've already made the decision to move Jordi out of the side. Am I going to casually start moving Jose out of the side as well and just writing off that 100 million or so that I spent on those two and just pretend it never happened. Yes. Yes, that's what's that's what we're leaning towards at the moment. I do like both of them, but they don't necessarily fit into the way that we play. They're both they're very they're very Spanish. Very Spanish footballers and we don't play a very Spanish style. Oh, Perisato has given away a penalty and this is this is problematic. The referee's going over to the little telly. We were fully in control of this game. And then the man we bring on to make sure that we don't let them back into the game defensively has given away a penalty almost immediately. He's been on the pitch about a minute. Oh, it's not a penalty. All is forgiven. Parasato's a hero. I mean, it was in the area. I'm sure it was in the area. So it must have just not been a foul, which I don't know if I've ever seen that happen before. Right, we're going to take off Park as our final change because he is shattered. Um, Oliveira is the only guy who can come. I don't want to play Oliveira there. Um, what I want to do is put Perez out there. We were talking about it before. So let's bring on McKenna and put Perez out there and swap those two over like that. And Perez can go back out onto the right wing and we can give him 10 minutes playing back in his original natural habitat where we've not ever really played him. That first season, three or four years ago, he was like our reserve right winger. And then Park came along. He fell even further down the pecking order and reinvented himself as a midfielder where he's been brilliant ever since. But I guess we need to we need to keep him able to play on the right just in case Park does move on. Although we have got Sydney who can play out there and Ian can play over that side as well. 
I thought when we saw that shot and then this little animation thing popped up, I thought he'd scored a worldie. But no, he missed and then a substitution happened. But for a second there, the game fully trolled me. And I think we've managed to see this one out. Manchester United have lost. We don't care what Manchester United are doing. But I think it's only a seven-point gap now. Surely not. So they lose to Leicester. Seven-point gap with five games to go. Oh, my God, we play them next. Well, I guess that's tomorrow's video then. Manchester United in the league, and then we'll do the FA Cup semi-final. We've got some big games. Looking at the, who we've got to play, we're not winning the league. Let's not get silly. We've still got to play Manchester United, Arsenal, and Chelsea in our final five games, but we are playing all three of them at home. If we go and beat Manchester United in tomorrow's episode, I don't even want to say what that could potentially mean. If you've enjoyed that, please make sure you leave a nice big thumbs up on there for me. Subscribe to the channel for daily Football Manager videos. And thank you very much for watching.